may stick weld that. I don't know. We do have, well, you can't see it because this is also TC's, uh, it's a, it's a firewood warehouse. Sometimes it's a sporting complex. If you see my, my daughter was in here with her mat and net. She was hitting off the tee. It was pouring rain and she wanted to get some swings in. So she brought all that stuff in here. Um, so, but either way back there, there is an arc welder. Hey everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tony and this is TC's Outdoors. And uh, we're in the garage. This is TC's Indoors. Welcome to the fab shop. So if you saw the end of the last video, I talked about a little fabrication project for the Easton Made 1222. And uh, I've been working on that for a little bit now. Um, but today is the day I'll hopefully be able to get it all put together and uh, show you guys what I've been working on. So the way that I use the 1222, I do a lot of resplitting. The 1222 is not really great for resplitting. The sorting table is really short and uh, I run it from the other side, I run it from the opposite side of the log lift generally, and it's hard for me to reach across and get these pieces out. I'm thinking I can extend this sorting table a bit and um, it'll give me an opportunity to, to run, to split a little longer, and then be able to sift through the pieces and get the ones that I want to re-split off. Jenin over at 765 guys has got, or had on his 1222, kind of an extension that had just slats going through it and uh, it did a pretty all right job of getting a lot of the junk out of it before it got to his conveyor and that's another reason i'm building this is eventually i'd like to get a conveyor for this and i just know that uh, my current budget is not going to allow me to go spend fifteen thousand or ten thousand or even seven thousand dollars on a conveyor uh, so i'm going to be looking for an old farm conveyor hay elevator or grain elevator something like that and i know a lot of guys have trouble with the slash building up in the chain popping the chain off, breaking the chain, and uh, hopefully if I make my grizzly bar set up, like, kind of like what Jenin had, uh, maybe a little beefier, and um, hopefully it gets rid of all the junk and the conveyor, when I have a conveyor, won't take all that stuff into my pile. That's my plan, so let me show you what I got going on. So what I plan on using is this pipe right here. This is one inch, Schedule 40. Uh, it's just steel, like gas line you'd get at Lowe's. That's exactly where I got it, actually. Um, I use an angle grinder to cut it down, which I know is not optimal, but that's what I had, so I wasn't gonna buy a chop saw for this one project. Uh, so let me throw some clips in of me cutting the pipe down and uh, cutting down my square tubing that I used. And So as you see, the grinder did a pretty good job. Um, I was able to cut all the pipe down. I was also able to cut down the square tubing that I'm using. So I'm using two inch square tubing, eighth inch wall. Uh, and I was able to cut a pretty all right angle on there. So this is gonna go into where the uh, hitch goes on the front of the splitter and it'll be pinned in place. This will sit on top. All the bars will stick out of that. And that's kind of how that goes. Um, the reason I went with eighth inch, I was kind of nervous I wasn't going to be able to put these holes in here, to be honest with you. Uh, I just used a hole saw in my, uh, my uh, drill press on the bench, so I wasn't sure how well this was going to go, but I am pleasantly surprised with how it turned out. I'm going to throw the footage in of me knocking these holes in here right now, and while I do that, I'm going to uh, get this mocked up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I've got these scribe lines on the steel here, and I'm just using my uh, speed square. I colored in the lines. Uh, it's hard to see on camera, but I took a black sharpie, colored in these lines so that they show up a little better for me to see. Just making sure that I'm holding that tight against the outside edge. I'm trying to center this on the pipe. It's two inch square, so I just go to the one inch mark. Um, I take this little spring-loaded punch, find my scribed line, go to the one inch mark, push, push it down, and then uh, do that twice. So I've got a pretty good little dimple there. 
And then just take my center punch and a hammer, find that. And that way, hopefully, I can prevent the drill bit from walking when I'm trying to start drilling these holes. Obviously, you don't want to beat on this with a hammer. It doesn't leave you the hugest uh, imprint, but it's a good, easy way to get a good dimple started. And uh, follow it up like that, and we are good to go. It's pretty important to me that these are centered, or as close to centered as I can get, given the uh, situation I've got here at home. Uh, all the holes are marked and now I just need to drill the holes. So um, I'm going to use this, it's inch and 5 16 so the outside diameter of the pipe is a little bit smaller than this but it's a little bit bigger than inch and an eighth so uh, I, I bought both hole saws but the inch and an eighth it's just too tight I'd never be able to get it through the metal um, so I got to go a little bit bigger and when I weld them I'm just going to have to be careful that's all. So. Uh, but before I use the hole saw, so this is like I said, it's carbide tipped. Um, I'll throw a link in on the Amazon link if you're interested in this, but I'm hoping it makes, you know, the 20 cuts that I need. But first, I'm going to go through with the arbor bit and run that all the way down, and then I'll have that as an alignment hole for the hole saw. And if I go straight down through, then I'll have a hole on the other side. I won't have to go uh, through all of the trouble of measuring and marking and center punching those holes as well. So that is my plan. Uh, first step, this arbor bit's got a little step in it, so we're just going to knock a little hole in it. Then I'll transfer over to the larger one, and uh, we'll see how that goes. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to go, but hopefully it goes well. That's my fingers crossed. Everything goes the way it should. <laughs> So, 20 holes drilled, nothing to it with this bad boy right here. This carbide tipped um, hole saw that I had never seen anything like this before. I thought I'd give it a try. I've only ever used the standard like bimetal hole saws that everybody's seen, you know, and this is uh, surprisingly durable. I can't believe, I mean, it's still, I just knocked 20 holes out. Probably took me, I don't know, maybe a half an hour to do all 20 of them. Um, 
but the thing's cold to the touch. I mean, it's amazing. If that had been a regular wholesale, I'd be glowing hot by now and probably would have not be cutting anything. I'd be on wholesale number three, so pretty cool. Uh, I do have a mess. You see my, my setup here with the cardboard trying to prevent the chips from flying all over the place, and then I have my high-tech ventilation system. I've got uh, uh, just a regular fan. <laughs> I have that door open, which goes upstairs to my attic, and then uh, that door open that goes outside, and that door over there open also that goes outside. So trying to get a cross breeze, get rid of that smoke. Um, I'm sure that's not good for me, but there wasn't much of it, so I can't imagine. And either way, so that's pretty cool. Uh, holes are done, and uh, we're on to the next part, which is going to be sticking it all together. So uh, stick around for the welding. All right, so you can kind of see what we've got going on here. Obviously, you know, I've got all these clamps in the way, but uh, so the grizzly bars are going to stick out about 16 inches. Um, I'll have them, they'll all be welded in solid and nice and true, so they're not wiggling all over the place. Um, First thing I need to do is start getting this thing welded together. So uh, I'm going to start today MIG welding with that little guy over there. Just It is all stuck together. Um, it came out pretty good. I'm not upset about it. Some of the welds look good. That one doesn't look too bad. Some of them welds don't look too good, like that one or that one. I did a little bit of grinding, trying to get rid of the slag. There's a lot of slag with this um, flux core welder that we're using, or I'm using, and uh, I don't like it, but that's okay. I just grind out the slag so that when I paint it, it's hopefully halfway decent smooth. Uh, it fits pretty good. It's not perfect. It's a little off of center, which kind of bums me out, but I did my best uh, given the situation that I've got here, and it'll definitely work. Uh, but now I need to figure out how I can hold this and support the bottom of these bars to keep them um, square and things like that so I can tack them into place. Is what I've come up with. Um, I've got this 2x4 here uh, clamped down to the welding table. It's 16 inches in between the edge of this 2x4 and the edge of the square tubing over there. So as long as I keep these tight to this 2x4 as I tack them into place, everything should be pretty cool. Uh, it works out that this 2x6 is the perfect spacer to use on the opposite end here. So I can just run clamp, clamp that in between, I uh, just tack everything into place so that uh, I can actually weld it. Um, but yeah, it works out inch and a half in between, inch and a half up there. So uh, pretty cool. I'm glad that that worked out so that I have something solid here. Hopefully to keep everything square-ish as I go here. And uh, as you see my spacer here, it's a uh, driveway stake for one of those fiberglass driveway stakes you get for like tractor supply or whatever. Um, it's almost the right height. Uh, it's a little tall, but I don't think anybody's going to notice. It's definitely good enough for what it's going to do. So if you've been hearing some uh, chirping along the way, you're not losing your mind. There is baby chicks in here. Uh, they are, I think, 
five weeks old, four weeks old, something like that. Uh, we hatched them out from our eggs and uh, we put them in an incubator and we only ended up with six that hatched. One of them died, so we ended up with five. Hopefully they're not all roosters, but if they are, they'll go in the freezer or they'll lay eggs, one or the other. But either way, see how easily distracted I am? Uh, I guess we should get welded, so that's... that's So here is the uh, the final setup. Um, the bars are just tacked in, and this one broke as I was putting it in. So I get, I'll tack that back together before, I, or I'll just weld it solid once I get around to it uh, later this afternoon, probably. But uh, I think it came out perfect. Uh, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be, and hopefully it works as good as I think it's going to. Getting rid of all the junk and gives me an extra opportunity, like I said. So I split from this side of the machine most of the time. Um, I'm short and I can't reach from the log lift side. I can't reach the valves and it's just easier for me to split from this side. So, but when I'm splitting, um, as I split, it's hard to reach across to get stuff underneath the wedge. So when I'm re-splitting, it becomes kind of a chore. So that's my way of thinking here is that I'll be able to split uh, a couple more pushes through the, the, the wedge and then I can pick everything up down here that needs to be re-split and just pull it around. It'd be a lot easier for me to get to and um, it'll hopefully get rid of all the junk too. And that's later on down the road when I get a conveyor because all honesty, I can't keep up with this machine. If, if I don't end up with a conveyor, there's really no sense for me to have uh, an Easton May 1222. I could get by with the Axis, no problem, or not Axis, but the Ultra, uh, um, without a doubt. So uh, to get a conveyor to get rid of everything is just gonna be the way to go. And eventually I'd like to get a box wedge. And this hopefully splitting directly into this in, from the box wedge gets rid of all the slash. I'll put a tote underneath here or the lid of a tote or the top of a tote or whatever, you know what I'm trying to say, IBC tote, one of the bladders, and uh, it'll catch all the junk. I'll be able to sort through it and uh, pull out the kindling later on and it'll work out perfect. I'm not sure if I'm going to need to put edges or um, sides on. So, so this is uh, just a sheet of aluminum that I bought off of Amazon, which is probably not the most cost effective way to buy materials, but it's the easiest way that I could come up with to have it delivered right to me. Um, bought the square tubing off of Amazon, bought the pipe at Lowe's, and bought this at uh, Amazon as well. So I'm going to either shingle them like this so that we don't have like a place for stuff to get caught together. And I don't know maybe if I just cut down these pipes and just uh, so I can slide it in like that, similar to that. Or maybe throw a couple of screws through here. Or maybe I don't need them all together. I'm not really sure. So uh, either way that's kind of not going to happen right now because I want to want to try it without the sides see if I need the sides at all and uh, we'll go from there not going to paint it just yet just in case I got to cut it apart and uh, change something and hopefully hopefully that doesn't happen because there's a it's a lot of mess but either way um, I think it's going to work out perfect for me and it came out just the way I envisioned it, so I'm pretty happy about that. And that's gonna do it for today. Hopefully the next time we get together, uh, we'll be using this, but I'm not very optimistic on that because uh, it's raining. It's hard to see right now. It was sprinkling a little bit ago. We gotta get to those logs out there too. See the big giant heaping pile of logs? I have got some wood to split. So for sure, in the future we'll be splitting, but I don't think it'll be the next video. We're supposed to get rain all afternoon and then all day tomorrow and we're pretty muddy out there still so uh, not sure what we'll be doing maybe some cut in next video or maybe it'll be another garage video i'm not real sure but either way i do know i'll see you guys next thursday i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you enjoy the rest of your day and take it easy guys we will see you later